A piece of asphalt or concrete can easily do without too much maintenance. But when implementing an element of nature, you can imagine it requires someone to take care of it. As nature-based solutions cannot only be managed by the public sector, the question who will is key in this video. Nature-based solutions cannot exist without service design. Service design addresses the conceiving and producing of a plan that is capable of facilitating nature-based solutions and functions both as the foundation as well as the backbone of nature-based solutions. Uh, by service design as the foundation of nature-based solutions, we mean the policy making which facilitates the initiation in order to implement nature-based solutions. Service design as the backbone implies the maintenance for nature-based solutions to be able to continue to exist after their implementation. So how exactly can service design facilitate and maintain nature-based solutions? Let's start with service design facilitating the initiation and implementation of nature-based solutions. Here we are talking about the establishment of different models of partnership and new synergies, both between and within the public and private sector. Instead of service design being superimposed by the public sector, nature-based solutions ask for the consultation of the public sector with the private sector. The idea is that the public sector will start to expose to the private sector what are the choices and priorities of investments in infrastructural work and the way in which this infrastructure will be delivered and maintained. In this way, infrastructures will increasingly be conceived, tailored to the real needs of society and closer to the communities and companies, and not merely as a po program portfolio investment coming from the municipality or state but also within the public sector, structural changes can be made. We all know the different established departments of our national government or municipality. One group focuses on healthcare, another group uh, on public space. This division comes from a very mechanical understanding of the world, which focuses on envisioning specific outputs per department. Instead of this separation, the focus should rather be on the establishment of relations relationships between departments from the point of view of creation of a shared vision among different parties. Since nature-based solutions aim at underlining benefits for both the environment, society and economy, it has the power to draw relations between those, uh, these departments and these relations need to be established within the service design. The way in which service design is capable of facilitating the initiation of nature-based solutions unfolds into the comprehensive maintenance of nature-based solutions as its backbone, allowing for it to continue to exist. In order to have communities or companies deliver a contribution in the delivery of services, a high involvement is most important. When involvement is established, starting from the initial, initial decision-making process, the responsibility is likely to be shared throughout the full process. Shared responsibility in the development of nature-based solutions follows in appropriation of the intervention which creates the, creates the opportunity to become self-sustaining over time. Besides bringing these different groups from the public and private sector together from the very first moment, also increases the chance of um, success as everyone will be aware of all the steps of the process uh, which again underlines the importance of service design. The problem, however, is that in most of the modern world, a large gap needs to be bridged between top-down and community-driven initiatives before they can collaborate in a service design model. People nowadays are skeptical or might even mistrust policies. L luckily, there are more and more new socio-economic models being accepted and applied in which people contribute and demonstrate that even without trust, they are willing to take part in governance and initiate a change. A great example can be found in the city of Bologna. Bologna is an Italian city with a bit less than 400,000 inhabitants. After the citizens' distrust in politics following the economic crisis, the administration of the city of Bologna made the decision to shift focus more to citizen engagement for the definition and implementation of new policy actions and interventions with short-term investments. For example, for the daily uses of green spaces and public squares, the municipality supported citizens' initiatives while also increasing the citizens' capacity to have a say in the future of their own city. With the aim to improve local democracy, local policies 
citizen participation and a more integrated system of co-design, the Civic Imagination Office was established. The Civic Imagination Office uh, consists of a young multidisciplinary team with a background in urbanism, architecture, economy, political sciences, art and communication to deal with the technical aspects of urban development, community engagement and organizational issues. Multiple laboratories in different districts of the city uh, facilitated the interaction between municipality staff and groups of citizens to collaborate on the analysis of the neighborhoods through which priorities, problems and resources were identified. After this analysis, the Civic Imagination Office opened up the process to all citizens, working directly in the field by implementing community engagement actions to inform, activate, uh, inform and activate as many people as possible making use of digital platforms, social media, formal and informal meetings, performances, walks, bike rides and workshops. This led to the definition of public space projects with the support of municipal officials sitting together to share competences and knowledge. After the projects were set up, all residents had the possibility to vote for one winning project in each district. Uh, in the first year of the office, existence, this resulted in uh, 2,500 engaged citizens and nearly 15,000 people voting for participatory budgeting projects. So to conclude, service design is all about new protocols and laws enabling the public and the private sphere to blur into more hybrid configurations and schemes. A lot of the innovation therefore comes from legal protocols for the making of more flexible regulations.